a world in waiting, in a world racing toward electric vehicles, one problem has remained unsolved, charging. While the West invests billions into charging stations and battery swaps, an Afghan inventor quietly claims to have leapfrogged them all. Maxwell Chikambutso, a name whispered in innovation circles, steps forward with a car that powers itself. No fuel, no plug, no endless weight at charging points. Just limitless motion. And now, for the first time, he reveals how it works. The lab in Zimbabwe. Inside a modest workshop in Harare, the invention doesn't look like science fiction. It looks like an ordinary electric vehicle. Its body sleek, its interior minimal. But hidden beneath its hood lies the mystery technology that has stunned engineers worldwide. Reporters gather as Maxwell begins his explanation, not with arrogance, but with calm precision, the energy source. He unveils a compact energy generation unit, Unlike anything used in traditional EVs, according to Maxwell, it taps into ambient frequencies, invisible energy that surrounds us. This energy is converted, stabilized, and stored in onboard systems, giving the vehicle a perpetual power source. The audience leans in as he describes how the generator creates continuous electricity, feeding the motors directly while keeping the batteries at peak charge. The car, in effect, never needs an external charge. The demonstration. To prove his claim, Maxwell invites engineers to examine the car. They disconnect any hidden power sources, scan for concealed fuel lines, and run diagnostic checks. Nothing unusual. Then, Maxwell himself steps into the driver's seat. With a quiet hum, the car powers up. He drives through Harare streets, effortlessly accelerating, stopping, and restarting, all without a charging station in sight. Onlookers gasp. Some cheer. Others whisper in disbelief. The questions begin. Immediately, the skeptics step forward. Is this possible, they ask. Does it defy physics? Where is the energy really coming from? But Maxwell is prepared. He opens panels, reveals circuits, diagrams the system. He explains the synergy between magnetic resonance, energy capture, and storage stabilization. It is not magic, he insists. It is engineering. Rethinking what the world assumed was impossible, global experts arrive. Within weeks, Harare becomes the center of global attention. Engineers, scientists, and automotive executives fly in from Germany, Japan, the U.S., and China. Some arrive to applaud, others to debunk. Maxwell agrees to an open trial. The car is placed in a controlled environment, a sealed hangar with independent monitors, cameras, and international observers. No hidden cables. No chance for illusions. The vehicle hums to life. Hours pass. Then days. The battery level remains stable. The car continues to run, seemingly drawing endless energy from nowhere. Skeptics challenged. A German engineer shakes his head, muttering, If this is true, it rewrites everything we know. A Japanese scientist, visibly stunned, begins sketching calculations trying to align Maxwell's explanation with existing theories. The Americans, cautious but intrigued, demand repeated stress tests, uphill drives, high-speed runs, long-distance endurance. Each time, the car performs flawlessly. Skepticism turns into unease. If real, this invention threatens industries worth trillions. The whispers of opposition. Behind closed doors, quiet conversations take place. Oil magnates, battery manufacturers, and automakers weigh the consequences. If Maxwell's car works, billions of dollars in infrastructure investments, charging stations, lithium mines, fuel pipelines, could be rendered obsolete overnight. Rumors spread of attempt to buy him out, suppress the invention, or even discredit him publicly. But Maxwell remains calm. He insists his invention isn't for sale. It's for Africa and for the world. Africa rallies behind him. In the streets of Harare, crowds gather in support. African students hold banners praising the genius who refused to be silenced. Universities invite him to lecture. Farmers imagine vehicles that never need fuel. The car becomes more than a machine. It becomes a symbol of possibility. A statement that innovation doesn't only belong to Silicon Valley or Beijing. It can be born in Africa. 2. Media storms a story. Soon, the headlines take over every screen. 
African genius challenges global physics. Is Maxwell's car too good to be true? Energy revolution or elaborate hoax? Major networks send investigative reporters to Harare. Some marvel at the invention. Others look for cracks in his story. Maxwell, patient but firm, welcomes them all. He allows cameras to follow his team, opening panels, explaining systems, even letting skeptics drive the car themselves. For every demonstration that proves successful, new critics emerge with more questions. The media frenzy grows. And so does Maxwell's determination. Corporate backlash. But in boardrooms across the world, unease turns into anger. Energy corporations fund studies labeling his work and proven. Tech giant hint at safety concerns. Automakers roll out flashy prototypes, try and drown out the story with noise. And then a whisper campaign begins. Anonymous articles spread doubt. Zimbabwean inventor faking results? Experts are paid to dismiss his claims on talk shows. The world is split between believers and skeptics. Maxwell, however, refuses to retreat. Instead, he makes a bold announcement. A global test drive. The global test drive. Inviting drivers from five continents, Maxwell organizes a public road test in South Africa. Scientists, journalists, and everyday people are given the keys. The cars drive from Johannesburg to Cape Town, nearly 1,400 kilometers. No stops for charging. No secret fueling. Just continuous motion. At checkpoints, batteries are inspected, sealed, and monitored. The results shock even the doubters. The cars never once run out of power. Crowds cheer along the highways. Videos go viral. The phrase self-charging car trends worldwide. Governments respond. By now, governments can no longer ignore him. Some, like China and Brazil, openly express interest in partnering. Others, like the U.S. and parts of Europe, demand stricter tests, fearing disruption to their industries. The African Union convenes an emergency summit. Leaders debate, should this technology remain African-owned, or should it be shared globally? Kagame of Rwanda speaks passionately. If Africa does not protect its inventions, the world will exploit them. This is our moment. The debate is fierce. The stakes higher than ever. The billion dollar offers. In the days following the summit, private jets began landing quietly in Harare. Representatives from oil conglomerates, automotive empires, and tech giants requested urgent meetings with Maxwell. Some arrived with charm and promises of collaboration, others with veiled threats hidden behind smiles. On the table, offers worth billions of dollars, licensing deals, exclusive patents, global rollouts, if Maxwell agreed to hand over control. But in each meeting, his answer was the same. Calm, unwavering. This invention is not for sale. It belongs to the people. Shadow pressure. The refusal sparked fury. Suddenly, banks began freezing accounts linked to Maxwell's operations. International suppliers delayed shipments of vital parts. Anonymous safety warnings were issued, pressuring African governments to suspend his work. And then came the smear campaigns. Influential figures publicly accused him of fraud. Documentaries were rushed into production, painting him as a con artist. Yet, each time they tried to silence him, the people's belief grew stronger. Social media in Africa erupted with hashtags like hashtag Maxwell is real and hashtag Africa Rising, the breakthrough partnership. Sensing the danger, several African nations rallied behind him, South Africa, Nigeria, and Rwanda pooled resources to protect his invention. In a historic move, they announced the creation of the Pan-African Energy Alliance, dedicated to scaling up Maxwell's self-charging EV technology across the continent. Factories were proposed in Lagos, Kigali, and Johannesburg. Universities launched research centers to refine the science. For the first time, Africa wasn't exporting raw materials. It was exporting finished technology, a test of strength. But the opposition didn't stop. During the rollout of the first production models in Johannesburg, a massive cyber attack hit the factory systems. Screens went dark. Robotic arms froze mid-motion. Panic rippled through the facility. It was almost a repeat of Kigali's sabotage attempt during Kagame's flying car project. But this time, Africa was ready. 
the Digital Lions, the Young Coding Coalition, immediately sprang into action. Within hours, they neutralized the attack and traced its origins to a European security contractor with ties to energy corporations. When the evidence went public, the backlash was global. Ordinary citizens began questioning why corporations were trying so hard to bury an invention that could help the planet. The first fleet rolls out. The Johannesburg plant roared back to life after the cyber attack. Within weeks, the first fleet of mass-produced self-charging cars rolled out of the factory gates. The launch event was unlike anything Africa had ever seen. Streets overflowed with crowds. Journalists live-streamed every second. And leaders from across the continent stood shoulder to shoulder. Maxwell stepped onto the stage, lifted a key high into the air, and pressed the ignition of the first car. The engine purred silently. No gas. No charging cables. Just motion powered by the invisible forces of his invention. A thunderous cheer erupted. The global reaction. News agencies worldwide scrambled to cover the event. In London, anchors spoke with disbelief. In Tokyo, engineers huddled around screens, replaying the footage. In Silicon Valley, nervous executives held emergency board meetings. But in Africa, there was pride. Pride that the continent had finally broken free from the shadows of dependency. Countries that once doubted now rushed to place orders. Ghana wanted 10,000 units. Kenya, 20,000. Even nations outside Africa, Brazil, India, and Turkey, sent delegations to negotiate deals. The People's Movement. On African streets, the cars became more than just transportation. They became a symbol of defiance. Taxi drivers who once struggled with fuel costs now drove self-powered vehicles that never stopped earning. Farmers transported goods across villages without worrying about diesel shortages. Young people began forming community car shares powered by Maxwell's innovation. Social media platforms buzzed with clips of ordinary Africans taking their first rides in the futuristic cars. The hashtag, hashtag Africa Drives the Future trended globally. The United Nations showdown. As blockades and sabotage attempts mounted, Africa's leaders realized the struggle had grown far beyond technology. It was now a fight for sovereignty. A historic emergency session was called at the United Nations. Delegates filled the hall, tension electrifying the air. Maxwell sat silently behind Rwanda's President Kagame and Zimbabwe's delegation, his face calm but resolute. When Africa's representatives took the floor, they spoke not just of cars, but of justice. Why? One delegate thundered. Should humanity's progress be held hostage by a few corporations and governments afraid of losing control? This invention belongs to the world, and Africa will not bow. The chamber erupted in applause from nations tired of old power structures. The breaking point. Outside, millions gathered in cities from Nairobi to New York chanting for the release of Maxwell's technology. Ordinary citizens demanded what corporations had denied them for decades, freedom from fossil fuel dependency. Unable to contain the global wave, resistance crumbled. Insurance companies reversed their stance. Ports reopened, and governments that once threatened sanctions now competed to sign distribution deals. For the first time in modern history, Africa was not just catching up, it was leading the dawn of a new era. Factories expanded across multiple African nations. Convoys of the self-powered cars spread across continents. Cargo planes unloaded fleets in Brazil, India, and the Middle East. In the streets of Johannesburg, children pointed at the cars gliding silently past and said, that's Africa's gift to the world. Maxwell stood at the balcony of his modest workshop, watching the horizon. His invention had endured attacks, sabotage, and doubt, but now it was unstoppable. The world was no longer the same. Africa, once dismissed as a follower, had become the engine of the future. And it all began with a young inventor who dared to believe energy could be free.